So our message today is about same checkpoint or same convergent point. This is the word of God. We're going to use an example of an airport where the airplane land, land and various trains coming from various places of the world. We can take an example of an airport. An airport, for example, a Heathrow Airport in London, for example. Or we can talk any airport you know in the world. So we have an airport where it is hosting aeroplane from all parts of the world, bringing passengers to do their own business. Others are returning to their country. There may be an aeroplane, assume aeroplane coming to Heathrow Airport, all of them coming from, one coming from Asia, another one from USA, another one from Kenya, another one from Uganda, another one from uh, Jamaica, another one from Russia, another one from Nicaragua, another one from Casablanca, another one from uh, the Dominican Republic, so another one from South Africa, another one from Australia, they are all bringing passenger to London or Heathrow Airport. Or any airport you know is common for every airport. It holds aeroplane from almost all part of the world. The one fact is these aeroplanes are coming from different places. And the convergent point is one. They're going to check in or land at the same place. Doesn't matter what route they are coming from. It doesn't matter which direction they are coming from. It doesn't matter the direction the airplane from Asia will take to go to Europe. It doesn't matter the direction an airplane from US will take. It will land to the same place, the, 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 the airport in question. It doesn't matter an, air, an, an airplane from Africa, how it will go, but the one common thing, they will meet at the same price. When you do mathematics, when you do, for example, factorizing math, you, you factor using common factor. So this airplane has common factor. The common factor is the meeting point is the same. Or the same, the, they are going to face the same fate. That they must run to the same place. So long as they are there, the, the, the temptable reads or the airplane is used is, 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 is for that route. Every week or every day. So we bring our message home now about which talk about we need to abide in Jesus so that when he come back, we not be ashamed at his coming. He didn't say Christian abide in me. He didn't say Asian abide in me. He didn't say uh, Greek abide in me. He didn't say white people abide in me. He didn't say black people abide in me. He didn't say uh, Indians abide in me. He didn't say Arabs abide in me. He said abide in me who? Any human being. Abide in me so that when I appear, you not have shameful or you not be surprised, but you have confidence. Also, Revelation 3.20 say, Behold, I am at the door knocking. And if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come and dine with you. This is Jesus welcoming everyone to his kingdom. He wants to come into your heart. He wants to be involved in your life. Anyone, not a particular race, anyone who hears God's voice, or if you open the door for Jesus, Revelation 3.20, he will enter and dine with you. He will involve himself in your problem in life. He will be involved in yourself in that thing that he's stressing you. He will involve himself in your family, in your marriage, in your children. He will come and dine with your marriage. He will come and dine with your finances. You come and dine with your problem of finances, problem of marriage, problem of lack of peace, problem of diseases. He will dine with you. The Bible says Jesus took our infirmity. He will heal every infirmity you are going through. Infirmity of illness, infirmities of finances, infirmities of being tormented by the devil, infirmity of, of, of 
of stress, infirmity of being pain by people, infirmity using by the power of the devil, infirmity of desire of the things of the flesh. Jesus is sweeter than the things of the flesh that are making you happy and making certain stronghold you. So Jesus want to dine with everyone. Why? Because it is the only way to heaven. He knock at the door. He say anyone, he can come to you. He doesn't invite specific special group. It is anyone who is weary. Also the Bible talk of that John 3:16 that God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever not Asian, not African, not uh, white, not Arab, whoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. Are there people who perish and not other not perish? No, everyone will face the same fate. So when we talk about convergent point of planes or aeroplane. This is the point we are talking about. There's a somewhere in the Old Testament, God said, Behold, there is death in front of you and life. Choose two things. Choose one thing, either death or life. Jesus came to bring life. So the heart of the message is this. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter the life you are living. It doesn't matter the, whatever you are doing to your neighbor or your spouse or your, your workmate or your people. It doesn't matter what secret things you hide and hold. It doesn't matter what secretive life you live. It doesn't matter how much you are lying to your partner. It doesn't matter what kind of craftiness you have. It doesn't matter what benefit you are enjoying in this world, whether a lot of lavish benefit. It doesn't matter what favor you are having or disfavor. It doesn't matter whether you have a lot of money or you are living in poverty. It doesn't matter how much you are down treading the poor and stepping on them the way you want. It doesn't matter how much you are using your position to make other fear people cry. It doesn't matter how much you are using your rich power or your rich, your rich status or your economic status to punish the poor and take advantage of them. It doesn't matter how much you're using your knowledge that you say, I am very clever. I was born clever. I am wise. So I should take advantage of and mentally challenge people, those who don't listen, those who are slow to, to act. It doesn't matter how much you're taking advantage. It doesn't matter how much living life you're living in crabs and eating leftover. There is one common point. There is one common factor before us there is internal life internal death there is internal death through hell there is internal life but one common thing is everyone will pass the judgment car of God everyone will pass through the judgment seat of God everyone will face the judgment of God in the last part of the last days one thing you need to know, the judgment will start with the saints because they, and they, those people who are not saved, they can't be judged when they're in the world. What for? Because they belong to Satan. Christians will be judged so that they are cleaned, cleaned, refined, and made spotless in the coming of Christ. The judgment will come on the part of the Christian. According to the book of Romans, the judgment will start on, will start on Christian people. Because the people of the devil, or those who worship the devil or don't believe in all people belong to Christ, but those who are being stolen by the devil, the enemy will not accuse them because they belong to him. So the enemy will even accuse Christian and lead them to tribulation with the intention to steal them. But the judgment of the dead and those who are not saved will come when Jesus comes or when they die. Even those who die, they have to be judged. But the judgment will start with the saved and who come to non-believers. One common thing we have, we are talking about convergent point, same airport, airplane from Europe, an airplane from Asia, running the same airport, 
taking first passenger say to Heathrow up in London or to Jomo Kenyatta in Kenya, they are all bringing passenger, assuming all the routes leading to certain airport. If they are ordained to go to a certain airport, it doesn't matter which country they are coming from, they will go the same point or the same, they will be guided by the same air traffic controller, the same center. All of us, it doesn't matter whether you're worshipping the devil or God, whether you're worshipping mammon or not, whether you're worshipping your money, whether you're worshipping uh, people, whether you're worshipping your spouse, whether you're worshipping your boss, whether you're worshipping a sport, whether you're worshipping a celebrity, whether you're worshipping anything, or you, you are being happy because you're, of your status or whatever, all of us will face judgment of God. Judgment of God, the judgment seat of God, God will sit and judge everyone like we have the same airport holding airplane, bringing passengers to the same country. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nebuchadnezzar and all the kings who tormented the children of God, they all will face or they face the same fate. Those who threw Daniel Ryan's dance, those who arrested Paul and Sira. Those who, who put Chadek, Michigan and Abednego into, into fire. They, they, were, they had good position and ability to do that physically in the physical world, but the judgment is the same. Remember the rich man in the Lazaro. When they died, they met the same place where the rich man was on the side of being tormented by fire and the Lazaro on the other side of good fate. A good thing, good life, and there was a separation wall. And the rich man was crying, yet in the earth he was feeding Lazaro with crap, and Lazaro was staying in his door eating food with the dog. But when they died, they faced the same judgment, and Lazaro went to paradise. He went to good price. And the rich man went to be tormented, and the rich man was beseeching Abraham or Moses, he was beseeching them, please. Why don't you let me come out of here and go back to the earth and tell people to repent, not to punish people like I punished Lazaro, or the way I didn't help Lazaro when I was rich, and when we come to... And now, with the, the ball change over. There was a swap of the ball where Lazaro is enjoying life in town or forever, and I myself, I'm, a, I'm, I'm languishing in fire forever. So he was saying, how can we send people to the earth? Or how can you make me go back and tell them to repent and to know there is real hell and there is real eternal life? But the prophet told him, or the Abraham, or I think his Moses, or Abraham, said, even if you go back, they will not hear you. If they didn't hear the prophet during that time, even now, if you go back, they will not hear. So you see, rich man, they, they, after living good life, and Lazaro, pathetic life, they all face the same judgment and they were separated. You will be separated. When you die, when the judgment comes, everyone will face the same fate, the same garu. The same garu where the separation will come whether you go to the fireside or uh, paradise or waiting for uh, heaven or Jerusalem or you, you will go to the side of internal fire, hell. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what life you're enjoying. It doesn't matter how you are taking advantage of people. And after doing all though your evil activity, you start laughing and saying how stupid people are. The Bible says, remember, you, 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 you who are enjoying things, not giving time to God, the Bible says the life on earth, the riches of the earth, the ravish life of the earth, the, ra the pressure of life is like flowers. I mean flowers, the beautiful flowers that come from trees. After some time they shed and they die and they wither. They wither and die. Only they come maybe two months, three months and then they are gone. That same case in life we live on earth. It is like flower. One day it will be gone, never be seen again. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, Ecclesiastes, a number of books of Ecclesiastes, one is chapter 12, another one is chapter 11. Chapter 11 says, remember your creator before the days of evil come. And chapter 12 talk about, verse 13, 14, that 
God will bring everything to judgment, whether bad or good. So we, the, the verse 13 says of chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes that uh, we need to know the whole duty of man to be on earth is to obey God and live a godly life. That's why we are on earth. Not to enjoy whatever you are enjoying. Yes, do what you are, you, are doing, you are doing pertaining to the world, but according to promises and the word of God. But remember, we are in the world, so we obey God and keep his commandment. We worship God day and night like the 24 elders written in the book of Revelation. Going out the seat of the throne of God, singing, holy, holy is God. God wants us to sing, sing song that praise him. Song that magnify him. Magnify the Lord. Song that talk about magnificent power of God. You are holy, holy. What is the Lamb? There is none like you. You are able, more than able. You are loving God. Song that praise God. God wants us to lead the word and put it in practice. God wants us, we put his word to lamp to our feet and light to our path. Remember, same convergent point, same judgment time. You there, you're worshipping the devil. You there, you're following the desire of your body. Remember, we need time for God. Remember, the things of God is foolishness to anyone being led by the body. Because one thing we need to differentiate or distinguish is that things of God, for you to enjoy them, you have to walk with the Spirit of God. When you get saved, you have two kind of nature. There is your body, which is the old nature, and there is the Spirit of God when it comes to live in you when you receive Christ. That is the new nature. When you are asking God for guidance and praying every day, and every morning you pray for God to guide you, and everywhere you go, you seek God's help in everything you do. You try to seek God's guidance in everything so you don't fall to temptation or sin. That's when you are led by the spirit man. Spirit man. When you read the word of God and put it in practice, when you mean what you say, when you walk the talk, when you talk the walk, if you say A to B is what you mean, with a sincere heart and according to the will of God, that's when you're talking honestly and not doing anything wrong. So you're led by the spirit man and seeking guidance of the word of God. Whatever you do, you use it in the light or in the ruler, ruler or measure or with the mirror of the word of God, seeking guidance. What does the God say about this? What do I need to do according to the Bible? Yes, there is an issue here. How do I need to tackle it? How does the Bible say? What is the world saying? Or what is the my friend saying? Or what is my conscience telling me? How are my what are my conscience telling me? What is my thought speaking to me? What is the Bible saying about this? When you follow the Bible way or Godly way, that's when the spirit man is reading you. When you see some nice enticing temptation or trials or temptation or things that are enticing you, but when you look the Bible they are long and you, you, you ask God for help and you say 1 Corinthians 10 13 says God you cannot let me be tempted beyond my ability. You always provide a door of, uh, a door of escape and you read it sincerely depend on God in everything you do. This time you are read by the spirit man and with that when you are told let's go for prayer, let's read the Bible Pray every morning, pray and fast. Let's go for Bible study. Let's go for prayer kesha. Let's go and sing. Let's go for prayer vigil the whole night. Let's go and for a conference. Let's go for a seminar. The things of God, such things will make sense. When you're told we have a prayer night, that will make sense. But if you are read by your body, if you are read by your body, you want to enjoy life. You want to wa to chat in WhatsApp. You want to go and watch horror movie. You want to is, you want to watch something, or you want to go. Uh, you want to enjoy yourself. It's okay to do some things like watching sport, watching news. It's all right. But if always you want to fulfill the bodily desire, I want to eat food. 
I want to go and play a dance, a dance competition. I want to go and watch movie. I want to go party. I won't go to party over a whole weekend. I will be partying. You are pleasing your body. Sometimes the body always will like such things. To, to go for party, to watch movie, to watch nice funny things, to chat, to have time with friends and chat. Sometimes you may be feeding the man, the spiritual man, when you meet with the people like praying together, reading the word together, singing together the God song. But if it's other physical things, you are pleasing this body man. This time, if you are told, let's go for prayer, when you are pleasing the body man, like partying, you want to watch a movie, a secular movie, you want to um, watch something funny all the time, and you don't have time to pray, or you don't read the Bible, you don't have that desire to think, to think about things of God, that time you are read by the body man, and you, the things of God will not make sense to you. Remember, I was saying, things of God are foolishness. To those who are perishing or those read by the body. So remember, the faith is one. Even if you are read by the body, for you to win the life, a Christian life, you have to, to walk with, to feed the spiritual man more than feeding the bodily man. You have to read the word every day. You have to speak to God directly wherever you are, whether washing dishes, driving, everywhere. You should speak to God. That way, you will make it because you know even mathematically we say there's no practice without uh, practice make perfect there's no success without practice you go for rehearsal sometime when you are doing for competition or even a drama you have to practice to produce a good song you have to practice to produce something of excellency you have to practice and do research when you are going for an interview and do research and look at the mission of the company vision of the company, values of the company, lead what they need, what are their mission, what are their vision, what is their value, uh, what kind of uh, assessment criteria. What, if you don't do research in anything and spend time in anything, you will not do anything perfectly. You have to uh, practice to make perfect. Unless you are uh, perfect, only God is perfect. Everything has to be practiced. If you don't practice driving, and you're going for a driving test. You just have air license and you stay until uh, sometime you go book driving. You will fail. So we need to practice to win life. We have to read the Bible. We have to fast sincerely. We have to sing to bring presence of God. We have to pray and fast. We have to, to preach and sing. You have to read the word of God and put it in practice. This way, you will be feeding them spiritual man. And when you meet at the convergent point, you will be separated to go to the right side, which is the right side of God, and you will be appointed to inherit the kingdom. Remember, whatever is making you happy in this world, remember this world, please. You are here temporary. It is a passing crowd. It's like flowers. Shortly, it will, it will fade. So, the Bible says, I think, in the same book, of Ecclesiastes or in the Bible that remember where you are going you, you need to practice what you need to do with all your might if you need to worship God do with all your might be, and with a sincere heart because if you don't do that when you miss it you miss it practice as much as you can if you need to work you need to work with all your might do work that is excellent don't spend your time doing things that are non-essential. Whatever you are doing, whether good or evil, whatever secret or advantage you are taking for others, whatever things you are doing, or whatever business study you have, you may have a genuine study, reading, studying, working. Working is not a mistake. Reading is not a problem. Being so busy, it doesn't look bad. But remember, you need to feed the spiritual man. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved. As the Bible says, God welcome everyone, according to John 3, 16. And Romans 10, 9 to 10. God welcome everyone to his kingdom because we soon face the same girl. Remember, even if you don't want to join the Christian or join the Christian dance or the way to heaven or join the Christian race, Remember, whether you are worshipping Satan 
whether you're worshiping mammon, whether you're worshiping the sun, whether you're worshiping the living things like moon or rock, or you're worshiping people like celebrity. There are people who worship celebrity. If you're worshiping sport, I mean like God said if you love something so much than God, that is your idol. That's what God says. If you love so money so much than God, that's your idol. It's your God. And remember, it doesn't matter who you say is your God. It doesn't matter what pleases you, what is imperative in your life. When you have a list of items, when you are going to supermarket, you say, I'm going to buy sugar as the first thing. Or you say, I'm going to buy milk. That is the, whether I have money or not, because the money is very few, I'm going to buy necessary things. What is on top of the list? When you have things to do over the day, you put something that is most important and basic needs. Like when you're new in a country and you want to settle or new area, the first basic needs is not going for party. The first basic needs is not going for dance competition. The first basic need is to look for a house. That is on top of the list of all and topmost. If you get the house, it doesn't matter whether you are living with friends or borrowing or having a temporary accommodation, but the fact you need to look for a house when you go to a, a new place. Then you start thinking, if you don't have a job, I need a job. Those are the imperative things, but you can't go uh, for holiday. When you're in a new country and you've just landed, you say, I'm going for holiday. And you're coming to settle and you're not for holiday or you have money to do that. The first thing is shelter or basic needs. What is on top of your list? If God look at your list and see the top of your list is not basic needs, which is the word of God. Putting God first. According to Matthew 6, 33, we need to put God first before you get the other things. The other thing will be added if you seek God first. Riches, houses, children, happiness, peace, they come after God is put first. Remember, it doesn't matter what is in on top of your list. If it's not God, God sees as an idol. And it doesn't matter what is on top of your list. Remember, the top list always should be God. That's the first list. Remember, it doesn't matter what is your idol. Whatever is in top of your list, if it's not God, it's your idol. I remember the garu, the way, the checkpoint, the meeting point, the airport, where you're going to converge all of you come from different places. It doesn't matter what road you're using, whether you're using the road of loving money, whether you're using the road of, of praising celebrity, whether your way is worshipping money, whether your way is worshipping uh, riches, whether your way is worshipping immorality, whether your way is or the top of the list is immorality. The top of the list is money. Top of the list is, doesn't matter whether he's having uh, achievement in life, whether the top of the list is having a uh, highest degree ever, or it is having pride, or it is achieving whatever you are dreaming about. Remember, we, we all converge at the same judgment seat of God. And if the Bible says, Ecclesiastes 12, 12, 14, that, or chapter 12, that God will bring everyone to judgment. And there are two destinations after that, internal hell or internal life. Choose what to, to do today. Like Joshua said, today and me and my house have worship God. What are you choosing? What is on top of your list? Remember, before us, death and life, you will get one. Choose life and you will live happy thereafter. Same checkpoint, same convergent point, same checkpoint, same convergent point, judgment seat of God. After that, two-way traffic, hell, eternal life. Choose life. Put God first and you will be blessed.